हेलो एवरीवन वेरी गुड इवनिंग स्टूडेंट्स गुड इवनिंग गाइस हाउ आर यू ऑल आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस लाइव सेशन आई होप एवरी वन ऑफ यू इज फाइन ऑल्सो डूइंग बेस्ट इन द रिविजन पार्ट राइट येस सो बिफोर स्टार्टिंग प्लीज कन्फर्म इफ आई एम ऑडिबल एंड विजिबल टू एवरी वन सो इफ येस देन टाइप वाई इन द कॉमेंट्स ब्लो Good, good evening, Isneha. Hello, Kanti Mani. Hello, Mathi. So, if I'm audible and visible, type yes. So, okay. So, hey, this is Riya Kalwani from Bad Technica. This time, I will be dealing with the revision of all the important topics that are there in NEET Biology syllabus. So, you all may be knowing today it is the third day of Nail the NEET revision series. So, I'm expecting every one of you are joining every day, attending the series. enjoying it too and more importantly you are revising all the important topics that our experts are dealing with if you have not started till today so start it today itself mark your calendars for the next 12 days so that you cannot miss the revision of the important topics that our four experts are taking so i'll wait for one or two minutes and then we'll start the session Good evening Abhirami Good evening Shivangi Welcome you all to this session So if you want to know more about the series and if you have any queries related to it you can just join our telegram group the link you can find in the description given below you can also call us on a toll free number that is displayed on our screen if not you can directly write a mail to us at info@biotechnica.org once you are doing this the technical team once it is finding this message they will revert you back immediately meanwhile we are starting the session you can also share this or send this link to all your friends so whosoever is preparing for this neat exam can get access to this link so that they can also join and we together can have an interactive session so welcome everyone welcome we are going to start the session very soon so welcome you all so i think many of them have joined so shall we start the session shall we so how's the josh right now is it high or low how's it yes sneha is saying yes man we can start how's the show josh guys hi so very good it should always be very high so today i will be dealing with the topic that is photosynthesis in higher plants so you all know about the mechanism of photosynthesis so we will be dealing about the experiments its introduction and all the mechanism of photosynthesis and at last we'll stop this session and further tomorrow we'll continue with the part second of photosynthesis so if you see the last previous year question trends you will find every year four to five questions are asked from this topic so if five questions are also asked that means five into four why four marks because one question is of four marks so five into four is 20 marks and in competitive exam you know every one mark is important so be attentive throughout come along with your ncert textbook take your pen and paper and start marking the important points that i am saying here so let's start with this yes so let's proceed so firstly we'll deal with what is photosynthesis so photosynthesis is a biochemical process now what is this biochemical process biochemical process is something like chemical process which is taking place in a biological system now what is a biological system here it is a plant body that is a plant system now chemical process some chemical substance is formed here now what is the name of this chemical substance it is nothing but glucose so it is a biochemical process or anabolic now what is the meaning of anabolism anabolic is to synthesize something so photosynthesis we can see the synthesis of 
glucose that is why it is called as anabolism and also it is antagonic that is this process is requiring a lot of energy to initiate with it so in which the organic compounds that is carbohydrate or in simple term we can just say it is glucose is formed from the inorganic raw material that is water and carbon dioxide in the presence of sunlight and pigment that is chlorophylls so we can just write the equation here what is the equation full equation for the photosynthesis it is 6 co2 plus 12 h2o now carbon dioxide and water here are termed as inorganic substances that will lead to the formation of organic substances now what is the organic substances here it is glucose along with it you can also find six molecules of water molecule but this process is only initiated when you have sufficient amount of chlorophyll pigment in the chloroplast so it is initiated if you have chlorophyll along with the requirement of sunlight so if you see this is the primary source of energy for a living system whether it is animal whether it is plant it is a primary source of energy where you can find oxygen as a byproduct so what do you mean by oxygen as a byproduct because hum yahan nikalne chale the kya ग्लूकोज हम यहाँ तो बनाने चले थे ग्लूकोज बट बाई प्रोडक्ट में क्या मिल रहा है ऑक्सीजन सो मेक श्योर ऑफ दिस ऑक्सीजन वी आर नॉट गेटिंग इट एज अ प्रोडक्ट बिकॉज हम बनाने चले थे ग्लूकोज बट हियर वी आर ऑल्सो गेटिंग ऑक्सीजन एज अ बाई प्रोडक्ट सो इंक्लूड ऑक्सीजन मॉलिक्यूल दैट विल बी लिबरेटेड और रिलीज इन टू द एटमोस्फियर सो आई होप यू अंडरस्टूड ऑल दिस इंट्रोडक्शन अबाउट फोटो सिंथेसिस सो नाउ विल गो इन टू द मोर डिटेल सो Here you can see the equation 6 CO2 12 H2O. ये कुछ ऐसे ही नहीं हो गया. Behind this there were many experiments that were uh, taken by, by the scientists. वो experiments क्या थे? That experiments really proved is CO2 necessary for photosynthesis. Yes, it was proved after some point of time. It is water is also needed. From where this oxygen is synthesized, is the source is carbon dioxide or it is water. So all these experiments were proved by uh, scientists. So now we'll see the experiments one by one. So what are the early experiments that were carried at that time to prove? Yes, this is the final equation for the photosynthesis. So firstly, the experiment was done by Moles. Now. The experiment name is Moles half leaf. Why it is called as half leaf experiment? We'll understand that. Now, simply, if we take a part of leaf. Now, suppose this is a leaf. So, this is a leaf. So, half part of this leaf was dipped in a solution containing KOH. Now, what is this KOH? KOH is a, KOH is a compound or a substance that is called as potassium hydroxide. Now, what is the significance of adding this KOH in a container? It absorbs all the CO2 in the surrounding. Now, what will happen if if it absorbs CO2? That means no photosynthesis will take place because CO2 is only the inorganic substance that is taking place or uh, that is used as a substrate for the formation of glucose. If all the CO2 is quenched up there, who will take care of photosynthesis? There is nothing. So, what happened after some time? This part was exposed. this is exposed in the outer surrounding and this part is quenched how because co2 is absorbed with the help of koh so after some time he tested this both parts of leaf and what he found interestingly he used starch test now guys if starch is formed how is this formed glucose when the polymer of glucose is formed it will leads to the production of starch so starch is nothing just a polymer of glucose when they are joined in a linear sequence so when he tested starch test he found that after putting iodine in the exposed part of the leaf he found blue black color and after he put iodine in the uh, part of leaf that was dipped in the koh solution no blue black color was found so what is the significance or conclusion of this experiment if no blue black color is found that means no starch is present if no starch so no glucose is forming that means photosynthesis is not at all taking place in the in this process so conclusion he proved that co2 is required for 
photosynthesis. So you can also see in the diagram in this, what I've explained is just represented in the form of a diagram. So now we'll move to a Joseph Priestley experiment. Don't forget student, Joseph Priestley is also known for the discovery of oxygen. Later, he discovered oxygen and he got a Nobel Prize for that. You can also find questions on the basis of this, like who discovered oxygen? It is none, but it is Joseph Priestley. Now, what he performed in this experiment, he was just about to prove if the role of, uh, if role air, if air is essential for the growth of green plant. Okay? So what is this? Which air is essential for the growth of green plant? It is carbon dioxide. So he was about to prove only this. So what he did, he performed or he used the inverted bell jar experiment. Now what he did in this bell jar experiment. So he used two setup. One setup in which there was no plant. Only mouse is there, you can see, and also burning candle. After some time, he found that the oxygen that is there in the atmosphere, the oxygen that is there in the atmosphere, it is getting used up by all this mouse and candle. Because oxygen, it is needed for the burning of candle and also breathing of animals or living system. But after some time, you can see no oxygen is left more in this atmosphere. So after some time, he put one mint plant into this. And what he found that after we are putting this mint plant, it is restoring what whatever it is removed. So what this plant is restoring, it is restoring nothing but oxygen molecules. So it is restoring oxygen gas in the atmosphere. And using this gas, you can see in the next bell jar experiment, the mouse and the candle, both they survive. Like the mouse survived and the candle, it is not extinguished, which was extinguished in the first experiment. So what uh, uh, conclusion did he draw from this experiment? So he concluded that plants add to the air what a breathing mouse and a burning candle remove. So it is adding what mouse and candle is removing. So he finally concluded that there is an essential role of air in the growth of green plants. One thing I also want to add here, the gas that plants are using for its growth is CO2. It is released both by candle and as well as mouse. So he called this carbon dioxide as a foul gas. Now in turn, what plant is giving to both these candle and mouse? Plant is giving oxygen. Now how oxygen is formed? After utilizing this carbon dioxide only. Now this O2 Priestley termed it as good air. So you can just understand what is foul gas. Foul gas is, foul gas here it is carbon dioxide. Whereas good gas, it is oxygen. So now we'll go to the third experiment, Jan Ingenhouse experiment. What he proved? Now he did one experiment. He took or he uh, set up two experimental uh, things like one in both the setup, he took the hydrilla plant. Suppose this is hydrilla only. All right. So what is hydrilla? Hydrilla is nothing but a submerged hydrophyte that is submerged in some kind of water. Now what will happen? One setup he exposed to daytime, that is in the present of light. While another experiment he exposed to dark. Now what, after something, what did he find? He interestingly found that in the presence of light, this hydrilla, it is releasing some kind of bubbles in the aerial parts of the plant. That means if the top plants, top part of the plant, you can see. So there he found the bubbles of air. And in the dark, he was not finding this. So he found that photosynthesis is a process that is taking place only in the daytime, but not in the night. So what he concluded from this experiment, he concluded that the bubbles in the air, aerial parts of the plant is of oxygen. Okay, because oxygen, we have already proved that oxygen is liberated. And once we'll also see how oxygen is liberated, we'll see in the last experiment. 
So therefore, in the presence of sunlight, only green parts of plant could release oxygen. But if no sunlight is there, oxygen will not be released. Why it will not be released? Because it is one of the byproduct of photosynthesis. If no photosynthesis, no byproduct will be formed. Now, fourth experiment, it was done by Julius von Sachs. Now, this scientist, he told nothing but he focused on chlorophyll. He told that chlorophyll is a pigment that is present in a special body called chloroplast. Now, what is chloroplast? Chloroplast is a kind of plastid that is present in a plant system. We have three kinds of plastid. One is leucoplast, one is chromoplast, and one is chloroplast. The green pigment chlorophyll, it is always contained in an organelle that is chloroplast. So he just proved that chlorophyll is contained in an organelle called chloroplast. And with this, photosynthesis is taking place which will which will lead to the formation of glucose and this glucose is stored as a food in plant which is called as starch so bas itna hi ingenhaus ne proof kiya tha and nothing else so you can also see here he showed that the green substance in plant what is this chlorophyll is located in special bodies that is chloroplast within the plant cells that produces glucose when plants grow and when plant grows, it is stored in the form of starch. So, all right, student, is this clear till here? Shall we proceed further? Yeah, the clear as abiko. Yes. So, I think you can now see. I'm just using white ink, so it is visible now. Smita Shivangi. Okay, Smita. All right. So the most important experiment, fifth experiment we are going to deal. If you have any doubt till here, you may ask in the comments tab. I will be repeating the same concepts again. All right. So fifth experiment is it was done by T.W. Engelman. Now what did Engelman prove? He was very smart. Like what did he, did he use? He used the prism. What is this? This is prism, triangular shape. And he used white light. And once this... Uh, white light is passed through a prism, it is always splitted into seven light. That is what called dispersion or splitting of light into its constituent color. So what is this uh, seven colors? These are nothing but vibgyor. Chote se padte aare, rainbow ke saat colors hote, that is vibgyor. Violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red. Take care. And where did he split this white light? He split this, this white light in a test tube where there was green algae. Now green color you can see. This is nothing but green algae. Now if algae hai or green hai, to ye pakki si baat hai, it will perform photosynthesis. Karega na? Yes, it will perform. Or if photosynthesis karega, dear students, so here oxygen will be released as a byproduct. Agree karte hai sabko is baat ko? Because hum jab se yahi dekh rahe hai. If photosynthesis will take place, oxygen will be released as a byproduct. So what happened? Oxygen was released. Everywhere it was released. Like this is an electromagnetic spectrum or we can say a visible light spectrum. More clearly, visible light ka spectrum. Okay, so he introduced this spectrum, this splitting of light directly into the text tube containing cladophora, which is a kind of green algae. Now, this green algae, it is photosynthesizing. Now, what will students? Photosynthesis is the oxygen evolve. Zarur hoga. Now, to know this, he didn't understand the angle of Engelman. He didn't understand the angle of the oxygen spectrum is the spectrum of the oxygen. Because all throughout oxygen was liberated. Now, what he did, he introduced aerotactic bacteria, that is aerobic bacteria in a same test tube. Aerobic or aerotactic. Now, what do you understand by aerotactic bacteria? Aero is something that is related to air. Air means nothing but oxygen only. Tactic means movement. Now, bacteria, this will always show more movement towards the oxygen. Show karega? Bilkul. It will show. You can clearly see in the diagram where there is red spectrum, there is more movement of bacteria. So finally, he concluded that photosynthesis, it is taking place in all the visible spectrum, but it is more significant in the 
ब्लू स्पेक्ट्रम एज वेल एज रेड स्पेक्ट्रम सो आफ्टर दिस द फर्स्ट एक्शन स्पेक्ट्रम ऑफ फोटो सिंथेसिस वॉज डिस्क्राइब वाई स्पेक्ट्रम बिकॉज यही वो रेंज है वे फोटो सिंथेसिस इज टेकिंग प्लेस एंड वाई एक्शन बिकॉज फोटो सिंथेसिस इज परफॉर्म इन दिस स्पेक्ट्रम ओनली सो सब सभी को ये एक्सपेरिमेंट क्लियर है इज दिस क्लियर टू एवरी वन ऑल राइट सो विल प्रोसीड फर्दर अब सिक्स साइंटिस्ट आए सी वैन नील वैन नील ने बोला मैं कुछ भी नहीं जानता फोटोसिंथेसिस के बारे में आई डोंट नो एनीथिंग अबाउट फोटोसिंथेसिस आई एम आई एम जस्ट वर्किंग ऑन अ ग्रीन और पर्पल सर्फर बैक्टीरिया सो आई जस्ट नो अबाउट दिस बैक्टीरिया सो इफ यू वांट मी टू प्रूफ एक्सपेरिमेंट ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ दिस बैक्टीरिया आई कैन हेल्प यू आउट तो वैन ने लाए और उनने बोला दिस पर्पल सर्फर बैक्टीरिया इज अगेन इट इज परफॉर्मिंग फोटोसिंथेसिस बट ये अदर बैक्टीरिया की तरह नहीं है हु इज यूजिंग वॉटर टू रिलीज ऑक्सीजन बट हियर दिस पर्पल बैक्टीरिया इट इज यूजिंग हाइड्रोजन सल्फाइड गैस एज अ सोर्स ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स ठीक है यहां से क्या होता है हाइड्रोजन इन द फॉर्म ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन इट इज रिलीज एंड सल्फर गैस इज इवॉल्व तो उनने ये पता लगाया अगर ग्रीन सल्फर बैक्टीरिया इज यूजिंग हाइड्रोजन सल्फाइड गैस एंड इट इज रिलीजिंग सल्फर गैस इन द एटमोस्फियर तो मतलब हाइड्रोजन वाटर मॉलिक्यूल इज यूज एंड ऑक्सीजन इज रिलीज एज अ बाई प्रोडक्ट बिकॉज इफ सल्फर हाइड्रोजन सल्फाइड गैस से सल्फर इज रिलीजिंग दैट मीन्स वाटर से ऑक्सीजन इज रिलीज इन टू द एटमोस्फियर तो इनने यहीं तक बात रोक दी सो वॉट ही कंक्लूडेड इ He demonstrated that during photosynthesis, oxygen evolved by the green plant. It comes from water, but not carbon dioxide. यहाँ पे carbon dioxide को क्यों बोला गया? Because carbon dioxide also contains oxygen molecule. तो किसी को लगता होगा अच्छा bond यहाँ से break होता है and carbon oxygen is released and carbon अलग हो जाता है. No, ऐसा बिल्कुल नहीं होता. इसी के लिए he proved this experiment कि it is released from water molecules, but not from carbon dioxide. उनके फ्रेंड रूबेन एंड कामिना है उनने बोला ओके आई प्रूव दिस एक्सपेरिमेंट विद द हेल्प ऑफ रेडियो एक्टिव आइसोटोप सो ही यूज द रेडियो एक्टिव आइसोटोप सो लेट्स कंसीडर दिस इज अ प्लांट सिस्टम ठीक है सो वी वाटर एवरी डे टू प्लांट तो कंसीडर दिस इज अ प्लांट्स तो अगर हमने वाटर दिया एंड ही यूज ही रेडियो लेबल दिस ऑक्सीजन मॉलिक्यूल विथ heavy isotope of oxygen that is o18 so once we we'll use this water this water will be used by the plants naturally theek hai if this is used so what you will find oxygen it will be released into the atmosphere in the form of oxygen 18 only because we are using this water only so if it will be released 18 so what he did ruben and carbon came in they collected this o18 and when they tested further they got to know yes this oxygen we are getting as a oxygen 18 only it is a radioactive isotope that is released from water kyu water because because here we are giving water only and we are tagging this oxygen as a radioactive isotope so here we are completed with the experiments if you guys have any doubt related to any seven experiments you may ask here and then we'll proceed with the questions So, if you have any doubt, you may ask. So, shall we proceed with the question? Are you guys excited? So, yes. So, we'll proceed with the questions. So, these are the questions that are related to early experiments only. So, the question number one over here is: One scientist cultured Cladophora in a suspension of Azatobacter and illuminated the culture. The culture by splitting light through a prism. He observed that bacteria accumulated mainly in the region of. Four answers, four options are given to you. You just have to find a right answer for this. Or uske baad I will solve and give you a strategic plan how to deal with questions. First, I'll give you thirty seconds for it. You can just. solve this question so anyone who wants to solve this question i'll give you 30 seconds students for this you can take your time utilize your time you can just recall the concept what i have just 
uh, explain and on the basis of that only you have to solve this question मेक श्योर मैंने अभी यहाँ पे क्या बात की थी इफ यू आर फाइंडिंग दैट की वर्ड इन द क्वेश्चन दैट मीन दैट इज द राइट आंसर सो कैन एनी वन सॉल्व दिस क्वेश्चन सो ओके सो प्रियंका इज साइंग ऑप्शन नंबर डी सो लेट सी वॉट इज द राइट आंसर तो जब क्लाइडोफोरा को किसने यूज किया था फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल क्लाइडोफोरा हमने कहां पर पढ़ा We studied Cladophora in a Engelmann experiment. और Engelmann ने किसके बारे में बात किया था He just introduced about the first action spectrum. वहां पर हमने कभी वॉयलेट और ग्रीन लाइट की बात की थी क्या नहीं तो इतना सोचना क्यों We have not at all discussed about this indigo and green light, orange and green light, but we successfully proved that. कि जो हमारा हाईएस्ट स्पेक्ट्रम होता है ब्लू एंड रेड में ही होता है सो द ऑप्शन राइट ऑप्शन फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन इज ब्लू एंड रेड लाइट सो के शिवांगी बेटर लक नेक्स्ट टाइम दूसरे क्वेश्चन में यू कैन डू इट राइट ऑल राइट सो वेल डन प्रियंका एंड स्टिया सो वी कैन नाउ प्रोसीड टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन द हाफ लीफ एक्सपेरिमेंट वेर अ पार्ट ऑफ लीफ इज एनक्लोज इन अस्ट कंटेनिंग सम पोटेशियम हाइड्रोक्साइड सोफ्ट कॉटन it was performed which showed that dash was required for photosynthesis the very first experiment that we study moles half leaf experiment ne kya prove kiya tha i will give you 20 seconds for this because this is very silly question a straight forward question no experimental based uh, logic and nothing just you have to answer is basis is experiment ke basis mein what was the conclusion the right answer over here is option number c so well done smita sneha mohabbat abhirami this is option number c theek hai so now let's move to the next question question number 3 here you have to match the following like one side you have given the name of the scientist and one side the explanation is given you just have to match the option so i'll give you 40 seconds for this question you can just solve your question and put your answers in the comments tab so first it is given ingen house kaise solve karna is question ko strategy i'll tell you firstly go what you have learned जो तुम्हें पता है उस साइंटिस्ट को फर्स्टली यू मैच इफ यू आर नॉट नोइंग अदर आंसर्स दैट इज आल्सो ओके फर्स्ट मैच व्हाट यू आर नोइंग हियर वी हैव कवर्ड ऑल द साइंटिस्ट का एक्सपेरिमेंट्स सो नाउ आई विल ओके स्मिता इज सेइंग ऑप्शन नंबर डी सो नाउ लेट्स सी व्हाट इज द करेक्ट आंसर फॉर दिस वॉट यू नो अबाउट दिस first read always read small sentences so over here i can find very small sentence it is the first one that is the discovery of oxygen and in the second experiment only i told that priestley is known for the discovery of oxygen you can just match option second with option a where you can find option second with option a it is now where only in the last option it is there so the correct option is option number d if you want you can proceed further if you want to match for option 3 also you can just match option 3 it is mentioned e point so what is a e point it is the first action spectrum of photosynthesis that was described by engelmann so samajh mein aaya how you have to deal with questions do not hesitate kitna bada questions how to solve you just need to know ki tumhe kya pata hai जो आपको पता है यू जस्ट हैव टू गो अकॉर्डिंग विद दैट सो नाउ द क्वेश्चन फॉर दिस टॉपिक इज ओवर नाउ वील डील विथ नेक्स्ट टॉपिक दैट इज वॉट इज द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ क्लोरोप्लास्ट सो वाई वी आर स्टार्टिंग क्लोरोप्लास्ट हियर बिकॉज क्लोरोप्लास्ट इट इज नोन एज एन ऑर्गेन फॉर द फोटो सेंथासिस वेर इट इज प्रेजेंट इट इज प्रेजेंट इन द मीजोफिल सेल्स ऑफ द लीव्स Now, if you see the structure of chloroplast, you will find it has an outer membrane as well as a inner membrane. This outer membrane is 
made up of phospholipid bilayer because membrane they are always made up of a phospholipid bilayer similar is the case for inner membrane too but this outer membrane has pouring channel which will allow the molecules to pass through it so this pouring channel will make it more permeable whereas in case of inner membrane it has pouring channel but it is less permeable in nature so one difference you have seen ki pouring it is more present in outer membrane and well it is less present in inner membrane inside the uh, chloroplast you can find viscous liquid that is called as stroma so what is the stroma it is nothing but viscous liquid between the two membrane you can just see the intermembrane space granum now what is granum the one coin like structure that you are seeing here it is what called thylakoid and when this thylakoid are stacked in a pile like structure they will constitute to granum and one granum is called as it is a singular form and when many granums we are uh, calling it as grana so grana is a plural for a granum so how these grana are interconnected they are interconnected by a lamina called stromal lamellae so here stroma is the site for a dark reaction what is stroma known for it is a site for the drug reaction and thylakoid you will see the light reaction is taking place now what will happen in the light reaction light reaction is mainly known for the formation of energy molecules that is atp as well as the formation of reducing agent or reducing power that is nadph2 now these powers they are called as assimilatory power so once these powers are formed it will lead to the formation of glucose and where glucose is formed it is formed in a dark reaction so firstly light reaction will take place and that is followed by dark reaction why because all the assimilatory compounds that is needed for the formation of glucose it is just formed in the thylakoid to pehle kya hoga subah hogi ki raat obviously pehle subah hogi pehle light reaction will take place in the thylakoid and the dark reaction will take place in stroma theek hai i hope this diagram is clear to all so here is a question for you grana are present inside the so where we have studied about grana where they are present are they present in mitochondria chloroplast endoplasmic reticulum or ribosomes yes shivani you were correct that time very good okay so priyanka is saying option number 2 abirami sneha very good everyone the correct answer is option number 2 because we have all we have learnt about grana they are present only in the chloroplast but nowhere else in the organelles so here is the second question for you stroma in the chloroplast of higher plant contains light independent reaction enzymes light dependent reaction enzymes ribosomes or chlorophyll stroma mein what is present chlorophyll present hai ribosomes present hai light independent reaction enzymes or light dependent don't forget stroma is known for a dark reaction okay priyanka option 1 very good priyanka sneha you all are correct option 1 is the right answer why because thylakoid it is known for the light reaction all right but if you want to study about dark reaction it is taking place in stroma that means it is taking place in the absence of light so we have light independent enzymes there why we are talking about enzymes because no reaction is catalyzed with the without the help of enzymes so if there is enzymes only that reaction will be catalyzed so light independent reaction enzymes is right answers now we'll study about pigments so chlorophyll is one of the pigment that is taking care of the photosynthesis but apart from this many pigments are there that are involved 
in the process of photosynthesis. So what does this pigment do? It will only absorb different wavelengths of light. Now, what is this different wavelengths of light? Now, for every chlorophyll molecule, there is different wavelength. Some chlorophyll molecule, they will absorb 680 nanometers of light. Some will absorb 7, 700 nanometers of light, but it is different for all the types of accessory pigments. So now we'll study one by one what is this pigment about. So if you want to study all this pigment, we can just study it with the help of chromatography. Just take a plant leaf, crush it properly. And when you will do a paper chromatography on a chromatogram, you will find a layer of pigments that will be giving colors. So you can just study this pigment with the help of paper chromatography. Why we included this point? Because this question you can find in the previous year questions for the NEET exam. It was there. How to study the pigment? So it is only on the basis of paper chromatography or chromatogram. Now there are many types of pigment. Like you can see a list of pigment here. So it is broadly classified into two. It is fat soluble and water soluble. The water soluble pigment that is present in the plant, it is anthocyanin. You can see the color anthocyanin. It is imparting the violet color or purple color to the flowers and fruits like chukundar. It is red. It is just because of anthocyanin. Or if you can see any flower color, if it is red or purple, so it is just because of anthocyanin. So what are fat soluble pigment? So fat soluble pigment constitute chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, carotenoids, xanthophyll, and all, all these four pigments that are included in fat soluble ka category. Now, how to learn a color for this? Because again, you will get a question from this. So how to remember the color for this? Chlorophyll A, kaisa dikta hai? So here you can refer to this code bag. Now, what is this bag? Blue, green color. So chlorophyll is blue, green in color. BG for blue, green. A for chlorophyll A. So you can just remember this code B A G. Blue, green, and in between chlorophyll A is there. What about chlorophyll B? It is olive green in color, or you can just say green yellow. So for this, the code is by. Say by to chlorophyll B because chlorophyll A is important. Abhi aise learn hua, chike? By. So B here stands for chlorophyll B. Y for yellow. So Y E for yellow. What is the color of carotenoids? It is, you can see in the diagram, it is yellow orange to reddish orange. So it is very easy to learn. Ye jo y e hai, isko yaha utar do. It is yellow orange. Now what is xanthophyll? Xanthophyll is yellow in color. So is this slide clear, uh, slide clear to all? So shall we proceed further? Yes. So now you have a question on the screen. Which one of the following pigment does not occur in the chloroplast? Kaun sa pigment chloroplast mein present nahi hota? Carotene, xanthophyll, chlorophyll B, anthocyanin. What is the right answer for this? Option A. Q, because xanthophyll, it is present. Chlorophyll B, it is present. Chlorophyll A is also present. Anthocyanin is also present. We have learned about carotenoids. Where we have learned about carotene? It is not at all present. Okay? So carotene, it is present in vitamin A rich fruit, foods. Okay? So it's not a role here. Look how it gets the question. Carotenoids we have learned, but we have not learned about carotene. So this is the wrong answer because it is all asking which of the following does not occur in the chloroplast. Photosynthetic pigment that is found in the chloroplast, it occurs in. They are present in thylakoid membranes. They are present in plastoglobules. They are present in matrix or chloroplast envelope. Where they are present? So the right answer for this question is thylakoid membrane. Because all pigment, where is the light reaction taking place? It is taking place in the thylakoid. So where will this pigment be present? It will always be present on the top of the thylakoid membranes. So now we'll study about photosystem. So total, we have two type of photosystem. Photosystem one and photosystem two. Now you will wonder like these 
photosystem they are classified on the basis of their functioning now every time photosystem one will work then two will work this is wrong it is classified only on the basis of their discovery as well as evolution because pehle jo lower organisms the usme photosystem one hi paya gaya so don't confuse with it ki hamesha functioning mein one pehle aayega it's not like that two can also come first but yahan pe ye discovery hai jo pehle ps system one ki discovery hui thi so it is called as ps1 now we'll understand kaise ye changes hota hai now suppose we have a chlorophyll a molecule at the center here also photosystem 2 has a chlorophyll a molecule this chlorophyll a molecule it represents it represents the reaction center yahan pe bhi it represents reaction center so dono phosphorus photosystem mein we have seen it has one chlorophyll a ka molecule now this chlorophyll molecule it is surrounded by many accessory pigment here also it will be surrounded by many accessory pigment now what are these pigments called these are nothing but chlorophyll b what all we have studied in the previous slide anthocyanin carotenoids all these pigments all right so what happens once the sunlight falls on these these accessory molecule they harvest this sunlight or visible light here also when the sunlight will fall they will harvest this wavelength of light that will be the visible light once this energy is harvested by the accessory pigment they will send it to the reaction center now kya hota hai jab koi ghar mein aata hai koi paise deta hai to hum bahut khush ho jate hain ekdam energetic so similarly it happens with the help of a chlorophyll a molecule so when it receives a quanta of energy it gets energized and electrons that are present in the chlorophyll a molecule it get excited excited and it is called as uphill movement theek hai here also it will happen yahan pe jo bhi energy harvest kiya in the form of quanta of photons it will be given to the reaction center that is chlorophyll a and again the electrons present in the chlorophyll a will be excited up and it will send this electrons to a downhill cascade now you will say then what is the difference between photosystem 1 and 2 aapne yahan pe bataya one chlorophyll molecule will be present accessory pigment is also same light is also same but the difference that exist in the case of photosystem 1 and 2 is the range of light photosystem 1 if it is photosystem 1 it will absorb it will absorb 700 nanometers of light but if it is ps2 that is photosystem 2 it will always absorbs 680 nanometers of light in the visible spectrum that is vibcure so we can see what is written in the previous slide photosystem that are of two type 1 and 2 both has one molecule of chlorophyll a that is an accessory pigment in the form of carotenoids xanthophyll chlorophyll b chlorophyll a forms the reaction center yes it was forming the reaction center here accessory pigments are also known as light harvesting complex antenna complex also quantosomes now here you can see jo chlorophyll a hai bahut sare accessory pigments se laga hai so all accessory pigment will be here to ye accessory pigment how they are glued how they are sticking to one another they are sticking with the help of protein some protein will be there that is helping them to stick these accessory molecules so chlorophyll a along with accessory pigment it will form the photosystem theek hai is it clear to everyone why chlorophyll a because chlorophyll a here is forming the reaction center as well as accessory pigment they are known as light harvesting complex antenna complex as well as quantosomes or these accessory pigments are glued by a protein so here you can see the same diagram it is naming of photosystem it is dependent on the basis of discovery and evolution 
but not in the order of requirement and function. Mark these line. These are of NCRT textbook. And this is important because question is there from this line only. So now we'll see what is the action and absorption spectra. So action spectra kya represent karta hai? Jisme kuch action ho sake. Chike? The curve representing First, we'll understand what is absorption. How this pigment are absorb, absorption, absorbing this light. So the curve that represents the light absorbed at each wavelength by a pigment, it is called as absorption spectra. As a graph, which represent karega ki okay, they are absorbing the light at this wavelength of light. Suppose this is 680, this is called as absorption spectra. But if they are after absorbing this light, if they are showing function or their photosynthesis in this wavelength of light, suppose this, if this is 700, then this is called as action spectra. Absorb kuch or kia. Excite hoke action kuch or perform kia. So this is how absorption and action spectra varies. The, the curve that represents the light absorbed at each wavelength by pigment, it is just called the absorption spectra. But the curve that will show the rate of photosynthesis at different wavelength of light, it is called as action spectra. You can clearly see the term rate of photosynthesis. When it is rate, that means photosynthesis is performing. Rate ki baat ho rahi, kitna teji se or kitna slower rate mein ho rahi. That is what called action spectra. So what is the photosynthetically active radiation? Again, you have one question from this line. So photosynthetic active radiation, it is par. What it is? It is 400 to 700 nanometers, again, which is a visible spectrum. So now we'll go back and understand this graph one by one. So firstly, the graph showing the absorption spectra of chlorophyll A, B, and carotenoid. Dear students, please be focused here because you have question from this slides also. Okay, so let's read which peak is for which kind of pigment. So here you can see it is shown here, this blue color, this blue color, it is for chlorophyll A. So the first peak that you can see always in the graph, it is for chlorophyll A. What is this green color representing? Chlorophyll B. And the last peak that you can see, it is for carotenoids. This graph is just representing kiss wavelength of light may they are absorbing the light. So, how do you learn? You will be confused. So, if you are finding the first peak, so first peak is for chlorophyll A. First is for chlorophyll A. A is coming first in the alphabetical series. So, A is first. Now, B is coming second. So, the second peak, if you find, if you find this question in the exam, so the second peak is for chlorophyll B because B is coming in second number. Okay? And C for carotenoids. So C is coming in the third number. So the yellow peak, the third one peak, that is for carotenoids. Now let's come to the spectrum of photosynthesis. Now we are talking about spectrum of photosynthesis. That means we are focusing on nothing but action spectrum. So if you see this peak, this peak and this peak, it is maximum at this point of time here and also it is maximum at this point of time some point of time this graph is going down what does it is sign signifying why this is going down because it is showing that there is lower rate of photosynthesis in this point so what is making this photosynthetic more in this reason these are nothing but blue and red spectrum Ab hai wo angle man ki baat. John Nebola, the first action spectrum. It is nothing but the blue and red region. Johan ne question be practice kya tha. Okay. Now, here you can see it is not touching zero line. Now, if here if we um, indicate it as zero, so it is not touching zero. Why it is not touching zero? Because there are many pigments here which are taking care for this photosynthesis. What are these accessory pigments doing? These accessory pigment, they are harvesting all the light from there and they are delivering it to chlorophyll A. 
तो अगर इफ दे आर डूइंग सो दैट मीन्स सम एब्जॉर्बन और एक्शन स्पेक्ट्रा विल बी देयर उतना अच्छा यू विल नॉट फाइंड बट सम काइंड ऑफ स्पेक्ट्रा विल बी देयर दैट इज वाई यू आर फाइंडिंग द थ्रेश होल्ड इज नॉट गोइंग टू जीरो हेयर सम काइंड ऑफ फोटो सिंथेसिस इज देयर दैट इज बिकॉज ऑफ अ एक्सेसरी मॉलिक्यूल्स नो वॉट इज द रोल ऑफ दिस एक्सेसरी मॉलिक्यूल दे प्ले वन मोर रोल फर्स्ट दे आर सेंडिंग ऑल द लाइट to the chlorophyll a molecule that is the reaction center that is they are enhancing the rate of photosynthesis what else they are doing they are also called as shield pigments now what is the function of this shield pigment they protect this chlorophyll a molecule from photo oxidation so they are shielding this chlorophyll a molecule so they are protecting this one because chlorophyll a molecule it is very sensitive to light that is why you are finding a very lower rate of photosynthesis in the midpoint because chlorophyll is not working there and it is the main pigment in photosynthesis so they are shielding this chlorophyll a from photo oxidative damage so they are also these accessory pigment are also called as shield pigment now coming to graph number 3 This graph is showing the action spectrum of photosynthesis that is superimposed on absorption spectrum. So you can see, here on the peak, black peak, it is still here only. Now, if you if you will go to the first graph, you will see the peak is higher for chlorophyll A. Then why only this much peak is shown in the third graph? Why not this peak is shown? Because chlorophyll B, if it is performing photosynthesis also. it is only the absorption spectrum students it is not the action spectrum so action action who is doing the more chlorophyll a is only taking care of the photosynthesis in a right way if chlorophyll a will be there the peak will be high so you can match this peak it is going with chlorophyll a in the first graph this graph clearly shows that photosynthesis it is mainly taking place uh, taking place by chlorophyll a molecule so these two graphs are superimposed rate of photosynthesis as well as absorption so you can just correlate with the first graph sky blue color line that is for absorption and here it is showing the rate of photosynthesis that is similar for chlorophyll a chlorophyll a that clearly represent that chlorophyll a is the main pigment in photosynthesis is it clear okay so i hope this slide is clear to everyone so one more effect you will find it here after 700 you see there is a drop drastic drop after 700 no photosynthesis is shown why accessory pigments are not working no because we have already studied this photosynthesis is it is taking place in the region of visible spectra that is 400 to 700 nanometers so this is beyond 700 nanometers student this photosynthesis will not at all take place because this is known as red drop because after red spectra this photosynthesis rate is dropping at a higher speed as a drastic speed that is what called red drop effect so what is the red drop effect the photosynthetic production falls below the far red region as compared to the red region in the electromagnetic spectrum or visible spectrum which is called as red drop red drop and after this one scientist came and they gave a emerson enhancement effect that scientist was named as emerson and what he told rate of photosynthesis will only be higher if ps1 and ps2 will work together agar they are working singly this rate of photosynthesis will always be thoda kam in comparison to their uh, combination तो इंडिविजुअली कोई भी काम अच्छा नहीं होता यूनिटी इफ वी हैव यूनिटी समथिंग सम वर्क विल बी गुड ठीक है सो हियर इन द केस ऑफ फोटोसिंथेसिस टू इफ पी एस वन एंड टू दे आर वर्किंग टूगेदर देर विल बी अयर रेट ऑफ फोटोसिंथेसिस नाउ यू हैव अ क्वेश्चन फॉर यू गाइज इमर्सन एनहांसमेंट इफेक्ट एंड रेड ड्रॉप हैव बीन इंस्ट्रूमेंटल इन द डिस्कवरी ऑफ किस लिए ये बताया गया था two photosystem they can work together or is it for oxfos or photophosphorylation or cyclic electron transport or non cyclic electron transport abhi we have what we have discussed on the basis of this only you have to give answers 
So anyone who wants to answer this question, Emerson enhancement effect and red drop, kiski discovery ko batata hai? So the correct answer for this question is option number A. Because abhi humne last slide mein pada, red drop effect or enhancement ne kya bola tha? Ki agar do photosystem, if they will work together, there always will be a higher rate of photosynthesis. Absorption spectra of chlorophyll A is shown by. Next question. Konsa peak hai that is showing the absorption spectra of chlorophyll A. Now here you have to be very clear. Don't be um, sure like ki agar chlorophyll A hai to only one will be there. One marking usi ke liye diya hoga. Chik hai? Hamesha jo examiner hota hai, they will confuse you. Chlorophyll B ko one de dega. C ko one de dega. Kis ko one diya? You have to just see. And according to that only you have to answer. Apne aap se predict nahi karna achha. One to chlorophyll A ke liye hi hoga. Two ke liye hoga. Like this. You don't have to predict by yourself. You just have to see the question. And according to question only you have to answer. Blue color chlorophyll A. So good Priyanka. The correct answer is. Blue color. So blue color, it is matched with option number three. So the right answer for this question is option three. That is third. Dekha how they are confusing you with the words. So they are marking this third to first wala graph. So the correct answer for this is option number three. Now we'll understand what is the process of photosynthesis. Now till now we have just covered the basics. Now we are going into more details. Now what is the mechanism of photosynthesis. Now we have two mechanisms for photosynthesis. First is a light dependent reaction and other is light independent reaction. Light dependent reaction is also called as photophosphorylation because why photo in the presence of light this phosphorylation is taking place. Now what is the meaning of phosphorylation? It is formation of ATP from ADP. When ADP will combine with the inorganic phosphate it will lead to the formation of ATP. This is also known as Hill's reaction and also photochemical reaction because it is taking place in the presence of light. Where is light independent reaction? It is also called as dark reaction, chemical reaction, which occurs in the presence and absence of light. But why it is called as dark reaction? Because this reaction don't lead any light. If light is there or not, it will work. So it has no work, no work to do with light. If it is not present also, this reaction will take place. But if light is not present, light dependent reaction will not at all take place. So that's why it is written, it, is, it can occur in the presence as well as absence of light. So what are these light reaction compounds that they are forming here? It is ATP and NADPH. Now these assimilatory powers, they're used by a dark reaction for the formation of glucose. So ATP and NADPH is formed here and after utilizing this power only glucose is formed. And under light reaction you can see we have two more reaction. One is cyclic photophosphorylation and other is non-cyclic photophosphorylation. We can now, now we will go into the details how these two photophosphorylation cyclic and non-cyclic are functioning and why they are called as cyclic and non-cyclic. Let's go more into the details of this mechanism. So firstly I'll go very fast. Suppose this is chlorophyll A. Accessory molecules are there. So once the light will fall. Now we are studying what we are studying? Non-cyclic. So non-cyclic photophosphorylation, it is always taking place in the thylakoid. Or more specifically, if you want to know, it is taking place in a granal lamellae. So who is performing this non-photophosphorylation? PS1 and PS2 together. But it doesn't mean that PS1 will always, always work first because these 1 and 2, they are only on the basis of their discovery but not functioning. So once this sunlight will fall on this chlorophyll A molecule, this will first be harvested by these accessory molecule and these accessory molecule will then send this light to the reaction center. Now what happens? This electron will be excited up. This is first accepted by primary electron acceptor. 
Now, what is the primary electron acceptor here? It is pheophyton. So here you can see the uphill movement of an electron because electrons are excited up. Now it will travel to the electron transport chain in a down cascade manner. So it will be sent to plastoquinone, then cytochrome B complex, and again it will come plastocyanin. Now what happens, this plastocyanin is acting as a connecting link between PS1 and PS2. Now from here also sunlight is falling. So they are accepting this light in the form of electrons. And from here also they are getting electrons. Itna sada electrons milne ke karan se, this photosystem one is again getting excited up. Now what is this called? Again uphill. Now here the primary electron acceptor is the ferredoxin. That is the iron sulfur protein. Now it will then send this electron to NADP reductase enzyme that will reduce NADP to NADPH2. So what you all have to remember in this slide, the primary electron acceptor in the PS2, that is pheophytin, and here it is ferredoxin. Now we'll go back and see how this is done. So firstly, you will see how this is taking place. So this is the diagram, NCRT book diagram. Firstly, the light is coming and the electrons are excited up and then they are traveling down the cascade. Now, if they are traveling down the cascade, you will see there leads to the formation of ATP from ADP. So one accelerator molecule is formed that is ADP and also at the last NADPH2 is formed. So this non-cyclic photophosphorylation in this one ATP molecule is forming when the electrons are transferring from plastoquinone to cytochrome B6F complex and one NADPH molecule is generated. So both these molecules are generated in non-cyclic photophosphorylation. But why this is called as non-cyclic photophosphorylation? Because the electron that are going, it is not coming back to home. Now what is the home? chlorophyll A molecule. It is not coming back to the reaction center. So how every time will, if we'll need these electrons, so from where they will come? So every time this photosynthesis is happening, right? So electrons, what is the source of electron? So the source of electron is photolysis of water. Now what happens? One molecule of water will break down. It will lead to two hydrogen plus two electrons will be liberated plus half oxygen molecule will be formed. Or if you want to release a whole molecule as a byproduct oxygen molecule, you have to do it too. So four hydrogen will be there, four electron, and again half and half nascent oxygen will form one complete molecule of oxygen. So this process, photolysis of water, is only taking in the presence of non-cyclic photophosphorylation. Where this is taking place? It is taking place on the inner membrane of thylakoid. Make sure this light dependent reaction, they are always happening in thylakoid. But we are studying in a detail, like we are into non-cyclic. So where it will take place? Inner membrane of thylakoid. This photolysis, it will take in inner membrane. But this NADPH2 formation, it is taking place in outer membrane of thylakoid. So now again, we'll go back and we'll quickly complete this non-cyclic photophosphorylation. So firstly, the light is absorbed. It is excited up. Pheophytin is the primary electron acceptor. Plastoquinone will come, then the cytochrome complex. And when the electrons are transported from this to this, an ATP will form that I've already shown. Now this plastocyanin, it will send the electrons to P700, that is photosystem one. Again, the electrons are excited up. They're accepted, accepted by the primary electron acceptor, that is, ferredoxin, an iron sulfur protein. Now this will send the electron to reductase enzyme that will reduce the reducing power NADP positive to form the NADPH. So you have clear idea about non-cyclic photophosphorylation. And here you can see photolysis of water is also taking place. Now let's come to what is 
cyclic photophosphorylation. If you have understood non-cyclic, so cyclic photophosphorylation is very easy for you to understand. And this non-cyclic is also called as Z scheme because the electron is going from this side, this to this. So it, you can see the Z like structure because the electrons are not coming back to its home reaction center. That is why it is called a Z scheme. Now let's understand what is cyclic photophosphorylation. So again, in cyclic photophosphorylation, only PS1 is working. In non-cyclic, PS2 and PS1 both are working. Whereas in case of cyclic photophosphorylation, only PS1 is working. So firstly, this uh, energy will come. It will be trapped by or harvested by the accessory molecule. They will send it to the reaction center. It will be accepted by a primary acceptor, primary acceptor. Again, over here is paradoxin, like in the previous slide I have told. Now this paradoxin, here, it will not send this electron to NADPH this time. Now, to whom it will send this electron? It will send this electron to plastoquinone. The very first chain, which we have non-cyclically studied. Again, plastoquinone will come. PQ, cytochrome B6F complex, plastocyanin. Now, what powers are formed in cyclic photophosphorylation? In non-cyclic, we have just seen what are formed. One ATP, one NADPH. But here, two ATPs are formed. How? When the electrons are traveling from ferrodoxin to plastoquinone, so with the help of traveling electrons, this ATP is gaining energy from here and it will lead to the formation of ATP. So one molecule of ATP is formed here and other it was forming in the presence of cytochrome B6F complex that we have already seen in the case of non-cyclic photophosphorylation. So what is the product for cyclic photophosphorylation? It is two molecules of ATP. Okay? Two molecules of ATP are only formed. Here is the NCRT diagram for this. So you can see when the light is coming, chlorophyll A molecule that is absorbing 700 nanometers of light, it is getting excited up. It is absorbed by some kind of acceptor that is ferredoxin iron sulfur protein. Again, it will send this electron to the electron transport chain that is to the electron cascade plastoquinone, cytochrome B6F, plastocyanin, that will lead to the formation of two molecules of ATP. Now, we'll learn the differences between PS1 and PS2. What is the reaction center? PS1, it is 700. For PS2, it is 600. Cycling, PS1 is involved in both cyclic as well as non-cyclic reaction. Whereas PS2, it is also only involved in non-cyclic. Location, PS1, it is present in stromal lamella. When PS1 is taking care of cyclic photophosphorylation, it is always present in stromal lamella. But when PS1 is coming into action in case of non-cyclic photophosphorylation, that time PS1 is specifically present in membranes of thylakoid. But where, where PS2 is present, it is present in the membrane of thylakoid. Why? Because it is only taking place in the case of non-cyclic photophosphorylation and this is taking place in the thylakoid. So oxygen evolved. So no photolysis of water in case of PS1, but here it is in, it is associated with photolysis of water as we have seen in case of non-cyclic photophosphorylation again. What are the sources of electron? Chlorophyll A and here also it is chlorophyll A. Now we'll understand the difference between cyclic and non-cyclic. So what are the products that are synthesized? This is very important. Students, you mark this. You can get a lot of questions from this slide only. Cyclic as well as non-cyclic. If you have understood the mechanism, it is very easy for you. If you are learning this or having a glance at this comparison chart only, you can make your questions. So what are the products that are synthesized in case of cyclic? Only two molecules of ATP. Whereas in case of non-cyclic, it is one molecule of ATP and one molecule of NADPH2. Byproduct, what is formed? Byproduct, oxygen is always formed as a byproduct. So from where it is forming? Photolysis of water. So was it taking place in cyclic photophosphorylation? No, it was not at all taking place. So no photosynthesis, no byproduct. Photosynthesis, oxygen is evolved as a byproduct. Oxygen is evolved? No, it is not involved because photolysis is not taking place. But it was taking place in case of non-cyclic. PS requirement, cyclic photophosphorylation, only PS1 is evolved. Make sure only PS1. Whereas non-cyclic, 
PS1 and PS2 are evolved. Location, it is taking place in the stromal lamellae, whereas non-cyclic, it is always taking place in a thylakoid membrane. So what are the condition requires? If you have a very low intensity of light and very low concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, that time you will have cyclic photophosphorylation. Whereas if you have optimum intensity of light, okay light in the atmosphere and high concentration of carbon dioxide in the surrounding, then you will have non-cyclic photophosphorylation. So here have you have one question for you. Which of the following is not a product of light reaction of photosynthesis? Konsa product light reaction mein nahi banta hai? ATP, NADPH, NADH, oxygen. So guys, you can answer fast. Then we'll conclude the session after this. All right. So Sneha is saying option C. Very good, Sneha. The correct option is answer C. Why? Because ATP is formed. NADPH is also formed somewhere in non-cyclic. Oxygen is also revolved as a photolysis of wa water, but NADH, it is nowhere found in the, or it is nowhere formed in cyclic or non-cyclic photophosphorylation. So the correct answer over here is option C. So the Z scheme refers to the type of photosynthesis that occurs in plant found in areas with minimal precipitation. Aisa to humne kuch padha hi nahi precipitation. To ye khud hi galat ho jata hai. The pattern of grana within the chloroplast we have just understood how this photosynthesis is taking place. Again, this option goes wrong. The carbon fixation process, which is known as Kelvin cycle. Kelvin cycle, I have just made you understand what is Kelvin cycle. It is nothing but dark reaction. But Abhi, we are only dealing with right reaction. So again, this option goes wrong. Now let's see what is there in the last option. An energy diagram for the transfer of electrons in the light reactions of photosynthesis in plants. Yes, this is the correct answer. Where we are studying about the movement of electrons in a cascade. So in photosystem one, the first electron acceptor is. Cons are first electron acceptor in photosystem one. Now this photosystem one, it was involved in non-cyclic as well as cyclic photophosphorylation. Priyanka and Sneha, they are saying option number D. Very good. So in photosystem one, the first electron acceptor is ferredoxin, that is FD. So the right answer over here is option number four. Whereas in case of uh, non-cyclic, it is always pheophytin if PS2 is working. Now here you have given the diagram, you, you just have to identify A, B, C, D, A. Before that, I would like to uh, ask a question. Is this the diagram for cyclic or non-cyclic photophosphorylation? Is it cyclic or non-cyclic? Is the electron coming back or they are just going, going, going and going? So fast, we'll end up this session. So this is a uh, diagram for non-cyclic photophosphorylation. Okay? Here you can just see A, what is this? The first, firstly, the, it is absorbed, the slide is absorbed by the light harvesting complex and then it is sent to a electron acceptor. Now what is this electron acceptor? Before el electron acceptor, it is firstly going to the reaction center. So the reaction center over here is because this is non-cycling. So the reaction center over here is photosystem 2. And once it is going to photosystem 2, we will either have hydrogen acceptor or electron acceptor. So nowhere we have studied proton acceptor will be there. Only we have studied about the electron transport chain. Always you will find the electron acceptor in a cascade. So the correct answer over here is option four. So the right answer is option four. So then at last it will send this light to photosystem one and at last NADPH will be formed. So I will give these two questions for your assignment. So take these questions for assignment and then we'll continue from tomorrow. So we'll continue from here only, chemiosmosis hypothesis, what is this saying? And after that, how is this then put into a theory? Firstly, it was a hypothesis, then it was converted to a theory. Then we'll understand how this is taking place. So all the best, everyone. Thank you for joining this session. 
so we'll continue from here tomorrow we'll understand the dark reaction and everything so thank you everyone for joining this session hope you enjoyed the session if you like the session do not forget to like share and subscribe also put your feedback in the comments below and at last after completing this session you will get one feedback form so do not forget to fill this please guys it's a request for you all please fill the feedback form that you will find in the comments given below so thank you everyone once again thank you for your time and patience we'll meet you in the next video till then bye bye take care